Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, we're gonna answer five questions that often get asked about INAV. So these are all gonna be in chapters, so you can skip ahead to what you want to learn about. The first one is, how do you update INAV? And this is a question that comes out every time a new release happens, and basically the answer is the same. So we'll get to that very shortly. The next one is what's saved when you save the settings. Then we'll talk about how you can move a servo to a different S output. We're also going to look at what auto level actually does, because there is still some confusion about auto level, so we'll cover that. And finally, is continuous servo trim safe on a VTAIL? We'll get into the whole discussion about that later on. But first, let's update INAP. Now, over my shoulder, you can see my AR Mini. I don't actually know what version of INAV is on this. It's probably a development version, but it doesn't really matter. What we're gonna do is update. So the first thing that we wanna do is open INAV configurator. And for this, we can just use the configurator of the version we want to update to. We don't have to use whatever's on there. All we need is the CLI, so it doesn't actually matter. So what I'm gonna do is plug the USB in. And we've got our COM port, so we're connected. And we're just going to connect to the flight controller. Now, this has actually got a version of 6 on it. I don't actually know which version of 6, but probably a pretty early <laughs> development version. I've not flown this in a while. But if you would dump straight to CLI, what we would do is type version. And that will tell us, firstly, which target we're using. So this is a Matek F405 target and then it will give you the version and more specifics. So it's actually January 14th, 2013. So it's probably a release candidate. So yeah, a fairly recent one. I can't actually remember updating it, but there we go. But anyway, what we're gonna do is look at this version number. And let's say for example, we're on 5.0. The next thing we're gonna do is uh, take a diff. So let's clear the screen and do a diff all. And this will copy all the settings from this, including different profiles. Another thing that you can have for free is what's the difference between a diff and a diff all. So you can see on here, there are different profiles. So we have control profiles, profile one, profile two, and profile three, and we have battery profiles one, two, and three. If you do just a diff, it will only back up the profile that is currently selected. If you do a diff all, it will get all the profiles for you. So that's the difference between the two. But um, on this plane, I actually have two different profiles for do two different batteries. So I'm gonna do a diff all. And what we can do is we can save this to a file. So we've got a record of it, but um, just for this and speed, I'm just gonna copy it to the clipboard. So I have the diff now that I can paste in at a later date. Once we have our diff, we're gonna disconnect. While on the subject of diffs, don't use a dump. A dump is purely a backup for that flight controller in that plane on that version of INAV, so you can restore it. But in all honesty, you can do the same thing with a diff anyway. I pretty much never use dumps anymore. Everything is with a diff. The difference between a dump and a diff is a dump is literally every single parameter on the flight controller, whereas a diff is just the parameters that have changed from the default values. If you just flash the firmware on there and then install your diff, it only changes what needs to be changed rather than everything. Anyway, back to the update process. So we'll next go into firmware flasher and we'll select our target. You can see because I've got a recent version on here, it's automatically selected Matek F405, but if not, you would just select the correct target based on that bit of text we saw in the version. If you've forgotten what that is, let me open Notepad. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paste in the diff here. And at the very top, it will give you that version string again. So you can see we're on the Matek F405 target. So the next thing to do is select the version of INAV that we want to install. So I'm gonna go for 6.0 stable and full chip arrays. Once we load the firmware online, what we'll get here are the release notes. Now this is the key part for doing the update because in these release notes, it has upgrading from 5.0 zero and 
Um, and if you have an older version, you click the link and it will take you through the process to update to that version. So basically what it's going to suggest is to do a diff all, upgrade the firmware, upload the font, which um, with new releases, it's well worth always updating the font because there's going to be stuff that's changed in it. Now, this next step is not usually there, but there is actually a tool from going from 5.x to 6.0, which will automatically update parameters for you. But that's not usually there for most versions of INAV. What you need to do is read these notes and see what changes have happened and which will affect you. It will show you examples of what's changed. So you can see here, for example, that there was a new AHRS added in INAV 6.0 and the parameter names have changed. So it may be that the parameter names are, act are actually wrong on this diff. So I know that they're gonna be in the master section. So yeah, you can see here we have the incorrect parameters. So they're called IMU ACC underscore ignore rate. Whereas on the new stuff, it's all AHRS. But also if you read these release notes, you'll know that we can just ignore these. There's only one uh, that we need to worry about. And that is this one down here, uh, set AHRS inertia comp method to adaptive. And that is if you have a fixed wing. So you can see that this is actually using the new um, AHRS, but it was before the um, parameter names were changed. So I can just change this to AHRS and that will work. Uh, I also don't need any of these IMU ones, but it will come up with errors anyway, but just ignore those errors. But basically you go through the, um, the release notes and anything that affects your diff, you will need to change uh, before you upload that back to INAV. And some things that will actually say, remove this section from the diff completely because it's changed considerably. So just basically go through all the release notes and make the, any necessary changes to your diff file. Now, if you lose these release notes or you need other ones, you can actually find them on GitHub. This is the INAV GitHub, and what we're gonna do is go into the wiki section. And you can see already here, we have release notes from 1.7.3 and they keep going. If we click on this show more pages button, we can access all the other release notes. So we'll click on 6.0.0, which is exactly the same as what's shown in Configurator. So basically just use this page to go through and update your diff. If you're on older versions, you can see here that you can go through the older versions to bring your diff up to date. So if, for example, you're on 3.0, go through to 4.0, check the release notes, make any changes to your diff file, and then go to 4.1, um, yeah, et cetera. So what we'll do is once we've got our diff updated, we'll just flash the firmware. So click that button. And what I'll do is I'll come back once this completes. Okay, so we have got programming successful. So now what we can do is connect to our flight controller. Now, because this is an update, we can use keep current settings. We only need to select one of these if we're starting from scratch. And I'll show you why in a sec. So let's do keep current settings. And we're going to go into the CLI. Now, this diff file that we've updated based on the release notes, we can now paste in. And the reason why we can keep current settings is because it does this right here, which is reset the flight controller back to the defaults. So it doesn't really make any difference what we select on that box. The keep current settings just saves us a reboot. So we'll copy all this and we'll paste it in here. And I know that we will get errors because of those IMU settings. Once this has finished scrolling, I'll come back. Right, so the diff file has finished processing and it's said that there's errors detected, so we need to check those out. Now, these are in red, so they're nice and easy to find. But also, I'm expecting that these are just the IMU settings, which, according to the release notes, we can just ignore. The, the, again, the important one was this adaptive, which we changed. So if that's the only error, then we're good to carry on and save. But this is all good, so I'm just gonna click Save Settings. That will save the parameters to the flight controller, do a reboot, 
And then we'll basically be where we were when we left off on the previous version of iNav. So you can see uh, navigation is unsafe, but that's fair enough. The GPS isn't powered, but everything is set as it should have been. So that's how you update iNav and it applies to every version pretty much. But the key thing here is to read the release notes. If you have to start from scratch on something, they will say in there. Anything that needs to be updated, it will say in there. The most important thing with an update is to read the release notes. Uh, you can see it is a quick and painless process. So while we're on the subject of saving parameters, which is what we've just done on our CLI, another question that gets asked is when you do a save or when the flight controller saves when you disarm, what gets saved? And the answer is everything. So if you've done an auto tune, all those settings will be updated. Auto level trimming, that will get saved. Ev everything that changes will get saved when you perform the save command. It doesn't just pick and choose certain things. And on 6.0, if you've got something set up which will save on disarm, you now get a message which appears at both the system message level and on the stat screen, which will show you that the settings are being saved and that they have been saved. Don't disconnect the battery until you see that settings saved message at the very earliest. If you want to be ultra safe, wait for that message to disappear before disconnecting your battery. If you disconnect the battery while it's saving, that's when you can end up with a full board configuration wipe. So um, that message was added to hopefully reduce that. Everything gets saved. One of the things that changed in 6.0 was the number of saves that happen on a disarm. So for example, if you had continuous servo trim active and you have stats active, pre 6.0, both of those would have performed saves. Now they basically say, I need to save. And on the next loop, it does one save. So there's less chance of having um, issues with pulling the battery too early, that sort of thing. And that was when those messages were introduced. Saving via stick command, uh, CMS menu, or from disarming, all perform one save and it saves everything. In that last section, I mentioned auto level. So this is the deal with auto level. It doesn't level your craft when you let go of the sticks. If you are in angle with auto level enabled and you let go of your sticks and you're at that sort of bank, it will stay at that sort of bank. It will not do that. That is not what auto level does. Auto level is a tuning mode that tunes the angle of attack while you're flying straight and level. To use auto level, I would personally put it on its own switch or a tuning switch. So on my setup, I have one direction for auto tune, I have a central position for off, and in the other direction, I have auto level. And you can use auto level in angle, horizon, or course hold modes. They're the only modes that it will work in. So what auto level actually does is allows you to tune the angle of attack. So what you would typically do is put the craft in angle, horizon or course hold and then enable auto level and take your hands off the stick. And then what it will do is tune the angle of attack needed to maintain level flight at that throttle. The easy way to see this is to enable the digital variometer on the OSD, which will show you how quickly it's ascending or descending. Once you get that pretty close to zero, sort of like 0 0.3 plus or minus, then that's pretty much acceptable. You can turn off auto level at that point and it will basically keep altitude while you're at that throttle level. So uh, that's what auto level does. If you want the wings to level when you let go of the sticks, you would use angle mode or horizon. That's uh, auto level has nothing to do with actually leveling the craft. It is an automatic angle of attack setting tool. So there we go, that's auto level. And while we're talking about that sort of thing in flight, we may as well now talk about continuous servo trim, which was a great feature that was introduced a few versions ago. But there was an issue on aircraft with certain tail types. And initially it was thought to be V-tails, but it actually turned out to be any aircraft that has twin elevator servos. So the problem was it, would, it wouldn't it would tune them both the same way or the correct way. It would tune one one way, one the other. So that would result in the aircraft banking. 
and initially people did think it was a VTAIL error, but as I said, it would affect any aircraft that had two independent elevator servos. So for example, if you had a crosswind mini with an elevator servo for each side, it would have affected that too. But in 6.0, that is fixed. You can safely use continuous auto trim on your aircraft. And that, of course, when you land, will do an automatic save. So yeah, there's no more issues with VTOLs. There never really was. You can now continuously servo trim. All good. And it's a great feature. It frees up a switch. And the final thing is about servos. So we're sort of following a path here. Now, something that often gets asked is in the mixer, someone will have soldered maybe servo one to S2 and then servo two to S4 for some reason. Now, my main advice is always set up your mixer in iNav first, and then you know exactly where you need to solder your servos to. But if you do make that mistake, you can't just change the number here and move this along. What you need to do is add a dummy servo in the middle. So what we're going to do is say I wanted this on S4 rather than S3. So what I'm going to do is add a new mixer rule and just it, it doesn't really matter what it is, but I just set it to max with a weight of zero. So it's always just doing nothing, basically. And what we need to do is insert this in order in between these two. So I'm going to set these, I'll set it to four, set these to three, and set that to two. So now what you'll see is we have our servo one, which was our original Elevon servo, and that's still on S2, and that's indicated by the red. We have our new uh, dummy servo as servo index two. So that's servo two, which is on S3, which is the pad we don't want to use for anything. And we have servo index three, which is this servo three now outputting on S4. So if you want to move a servo, that is the way you need to do it. And of course you'd click save and reboot at that point. So there you go, guys. I hope this answered five questions that you may have had about INAV. And if it did, great. Please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and the bell icon. That will help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to do this too. Thank you very much for watching, guys. See you on the next one. Fly models like you stole them.